Son, I know what you're thinking. This fool returns from the dark side of the moon the day after my graduation to steal my shot. You see, that bit about the moon is true. And what is also true is that I am dying. And before I am laid to my final rest to be granted an audience with my own father, to ask him the very questions that seem to be weighing on your shoulders, permit me to give you this apology because, son, if I die, I am gone and then you will never heal, believe me. Believe me. You see, it all happened so fast. Immaturity mixed with adolescence mixed with last. That night we sealed your fate. Me and your mother, we were not thinking straight. One early morning she came and told me her periods were late. Wait, I don't want you for one second thinking that you're a mistake. Son, I love you. I was 19. What did I know about fatherhood? I literally broke in tears when she broke the news. We spent the next hours contemplating what to do with you and seeing what you've grown to be. I'm glad we couldn't afford what we planned to do. You see, I'm telling you this because I see you're a man and you can handle it. Your mother probably didn't tell you this. You were led to believe that I ran, but that is not true. God damn it, I am a man. What was I supposed to do? I attend class while my baby girl is outside skipping periods. I had to leave. I went to the city and worked for the man. But you see, things don't always work as planned. The city swallowed me. Fast life and drug lives hallowed me. The landlord on my case. The lawyers on my case. Your mother on my case. Her mother on my case. I even took down the mirror. I couldn't stand my face. Twenty years old, you have no idea of the reality I faced. When I was at my low, I went fishing for a high on things that got me hooked and anchored me down and the streets became my home. And then prison. And then parole. And did not have that your mother had blocked my phone. And quick enough, the weather turned grey and there was a dark cloud above my head and I could not see. My only son. The name of the poem is Sunday's Father. Uh, Alright. Which one? Gallery? No. <laughs> uh, Alright, cool, I got it. <clears throat> My new material. I come to you torn. Ripped open from all the unstitching, you see, I have been sold into a man. Pride is an intricate pattern donated in my skin. Ego is threaded deep in my fabrics. I know how to hide my inner, my material is not see-through. I am known to wear my lungs on my sleeves for my arms to be breathtaking. Me and you are cut from a different cloth. I was made for winter and rainy days took out only when it's cold, or grey, or when there is war, for I am armour, made with metals and chains to protect, to not break. I am not a little black number. You will not find silk here, no cotton, just hard leather. When your monster is in my denim, in my jeans, well at least it was, until I learned that the war was within me, tucked in my seam allowance, for I've allowed it there, like wool in a winter coat. But this pattern is old, yet they insisted on designing me into one, said I needed to be strong. No woman would wear me if I cannot protect her. But what happens to me in spring, when she needs to show off his skin? What then? Do I go back into the closet like a monster I am? What happens to me, when I'm all worn out? Men like me are out of fashion. Young women are made aware of the men they wear. But let's also address the boys. So a little colour in his sleeves, a little lace, it's only fur. And remember, girls look good in leather too. It lives inside of me. I can feel it moving. Eating me from inside, trying to escape chaos. I am a shack on fire. My insides are burning, but my skin is corrugated iron. You cannot see the flames yet. Smoke is the only evidence to my reality that somewhere inside an inferno seeks to escape. I have to bottle in 
there's emotions, there's disaster waiting to happen. I've been doing this for so long, sometimes I forget it's been there until someone tries to touch me. Forgive me for my lack of tears. You see, they were the first to burn. And then my voice followed. By the time I turned 18, it was already too late. You see, as a man, I quickly learned to hold in the fire. This is why you cannot make a home out of me. This is why I am not as open. This is why I am not outspoken. I am a museum of burnt things. I am a gallery of earth. Yes, I am sorry that I lied, but lying becomes the only option when people can't stand the truth. I can feel my bones burning. My skin is beginning to cave in. Even with this pressure I have managed to hold in, I am still accountable for my brother's sins. Because being idle is far of a worst sin. It has been several moons and I haven't seen my brother since. And I heard that his flames has broke through his skin. And those that were unfortunately close to him are victims to this inevitability. And now they've come to me. Looking for clarity. Telling me that I am like my brother. Trust me, I know. I will know this until I die. Or blast. Or whichever one comes first, I confess. I don't know how it feels like to risk it. Don't tell me being a man is a privilege. For what's a privilege when you're feared by the ones you're raised to protect? I have managed to cocoon this man soon only to be told it is nothing to take pride in. Would you rather I explode? I am a shark on fire. I am a hazard. When my father left, he forgot to turn off the stove. Now this heat only explains why I am called my father's son. And the clouds that I have been hiding behind are starting to unveil and I don't think that I can survive this noon. I've been trying to avoid what could be a squatter camp domino effect. When one ship burns, the rest follows. What were you expecting? When you gave your daughters dolls and you gave your sons guns for toys, what were you preparing them for? I am not saying that my pain is worse than yours. I am saying that I am hurting too. And empathy becomes a bit hard when I'm in the face that is hurting you. It's a catch-22. Because if I come close to you, I will burn you. Now the only option is to give you space. The problem now is I cannot promise you that my brother will do the same. All men are the same. All men are insane. Trapped in a burning asylum. All men are trying to escape. And some men actually escape. And the society has suffered their ways. Now they are pointing fingers at the very monsters they create. But then again some men are ashamed to admit that they too are afraid of their brothers. Or to even confess to their flames. So I propose this. Talk to your sons. Tell them that it's okay to be afraid. That he's gonna need those tears to dry the flames. Because the day you tell him it is not, I swear it is the day you set his insides on fire. Chaos. Wait.